I've got something interesting going on behind me here for people that uh, follow me on my blog or YouTube channel or whatever. Um, you'll know that this is a Core XY UV AB. And basically, what that means is the extruder gantry, this lump here, is on a separate gantry. It's a UV axis. And then I've got a load balancing gantry, which is that thing there which has just got lumps of lead in it and it does the opposite of whatever the extruder gantry does and that's the AB gantry. So normally and up until now uh, whenever I print something the, the axes get split into X, Y, U, V, A and B for homing and then the axes have been combined so that as far as the print is concerned it's just a single X, Y so it's just a core XY for print moves. So you can have a, a standard G code file. But then a while ago, um, and I, I mentioned it in another video, um, I discovered that what I wanted to do was run higher motor current on the bigger motors that drive the extruders because it's a lot bigger mass. But I discovered a while ago that the way I was doing it there's a problem in that if you reduce the current for homing, which is something I like to do, or if idle hold steps in, then the motor currents uh, revert to being mapped to a single axis. So that prompted me to do something that I've been um, toying with for quite a while. Before I had motors on that UV gantry, they were it was just passively driven. Basically, it were just bits of string tied between the extruder gantry and the hot end gantry. So the hot end dragged the extruders around, which wasn't ideal. But one thing it was quite good at, because there's some slack in the bowden tubes between the two gantries and there was some slack in the string, was that when you do, uh, when the printer's doing short zigzag infill moves the the hot end was zigzagging backwards and forwards but because of this slack in the tubes the extruders are pretty much stationary which from a kind of vibration point of view was quite good because there's a lot of mass there so i had this idea of um, doing a little python script to generate um, g codes that would contain U, V, A and B moves from a file that's just got X and Y. And then it struck me that those U, V, A, B modes don't need to exactly match the X and Y. So I kind of thought I could replicate this thing that I had when the extruder was passively driven so that the short zigzags didn't rock the whole machine about because it's only the hot end that moves and not the extruder gantry. So basically I've little, written a little Python script that does that so I can post process a g-code file and it generates um, g1 x y u v a b moves. And there are just a few simple rules. The first rule is that the u-axis will only move if the end position is greater than 20 mil from the current position so if there's a, a move on the hot end an x move that's less than 20 mil the extruder gantry won't move and then there is a uh, another rule which is exactly the same thing but for the v-axis which mimics what the y-axis is doing and then the third rule is the a and b and which is the load balancing gantry and the motors on that are reversed so that the the carriage that's just got big lumps of lead in it will do the opposite of whatever u and v is doing uh, just because the motors are reversed so I don't have to do any fencing maths or anything like that 
Um, so the A does exactly the same as the U, and the B does the same as the V. So after debugging and testing it out, I tried it, and there was um, there was one little problem in that when it comes to doing arc, there's a lot of short segmented moves. So most of the way around the arc, there was no movement for the extruder, but then every now and again, there would be like a 20 mil move in amongst all these little one mil moves. That particular move, it slowed down the little segmented move so that it all happened at the same time. So when I did a, um, a circle, it was kind of jerky. It would do a quarter of an arc and then it would move the UV gantry and then it would do another quarter of an arc and then it would move. So I came up with another little rule, which is if um, a hot end move is less than one millimeter then it will move the xy gantry and it's kind of to track these arcs um, so any small segmented move will translate to the extruder gantry but any kind of move that's bigger than one mil and um, it's actually 20 mil in x or 15 mil in Y, plus or minus. So any move that's like within those parameters, um, it won't move. If it's less than a mil, it will. And if it's more than 20 or 15, it will. And that is to say that if the end position is within those parameters of the start position, then it will move. So um, here it is running. It's um, interesting. Ignore the quality of that print, it's my um, experimental hot end, it's still under development so it ain't the best print in the world. So basically this means now that the X, Y, U, V, A, B axes are always separate, they're never combined. So I can set um, whatever motor currents for whatever gantry I want. So I, I can use high current for those uh, big mean 23s. Which means that I should be able to increase the acceleration and uh, then speed things up a bit.